today's Lunch and Learn, we're going to be talking all about Agility APIs. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, I'll kind of be looking over to the chat as I go along. So ask questions and I'll try to answer them to my best abilities. I think we can get started. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to be talking about what an API is. We'll be talking about the Content Fetch API in Agility, our Content Sync API, our GraphQL API, as well as our Content Management API. So first off, what is an API? An API, also known as an application programming interface, is a way for multiple programs or services to communicate with each other. It's a type of software interface offering a service to other pieces of software. APIs make it really easy for developers by simplifying web and app development, saving you time and money, but also giving you the flexibility and ease of use to provide opportunities for innovation. As I mentioned before, in this Lunch and Learn, we're going to be talking all about Agility APIs, what they're for, and when to use them. So first up, we have the Agility Content Fetch API. Now, the Content Fetch API is a REST API endpoint for all of the content and pages in your Agility CMS instance. The Content Fetch API is hosted and maintained by Agility and doesn't require any additional setup or web hosts. Some benefits of the Content Fetch API is it gives you the freedom to use any programming language or framework you want to retrieve content and pages from Agility. It's fast, so the API requests never actually hit your content database. So this won't affect any of your CMS users and can handle millions of requests. The Content Fetch API is also really stable. Um, so the API requests are handled by Fastly CDN, and Fastly is one of the leading cloud computing service providers. And there's also reduced complexity, uh, complexity when using the Content Fetch API. So you don't need to be a full stack developer to integrate um, Agility with um, you know, your digital solution. So the Content Fetch API um, provides uh, a handful of methods. So we have the um, content item method that gets the details of a content item when you pass in its content ID. You can retrieve a list of content from Agility by providing a reference name. You can get the uh, details of a page, including, including its content zones, all of the modules on that page, its properties and SEO metadata by um, using the page ID. You can retrieve the sitemap that you have configured in Agility with the Content Fetch API. You can also get all of the content models you have configured. So all of the content modules, and, uh, the content models and page modules that are defined in your instance. And you can also get the URL redirections. So if you have um, a list of URL redirections configured in Agility, you can also fetch that from the Content Fetch uh, API. So here's an example of the Content Fetch API. So on the right-hand side, you can see we have a picture here. We have the curl request uh, as well as the request URL. And you can see in the request URL, we're passing in our um, instance GUID. And the GUID is just the um, unique identifier for the instance you're working in. We're also specifying in this request that we want to fetch preview content. So content that is not yet published, but in a staging state. We're also passing in our language code. In this case, we're using ENUS. And you can see that we're retrieving an item and passing in the content ID of 124. So in this case, we're retrieving a individual blog post and you can see we're fetching its properties and all of the fields relating to that blog post. Next up, we have the Content Sync API. Now the Content Sync API makes it really easy to keep a content cache or a copy of your Agility pages or content. So it can be readily accessible to your digital solutions without calling, to, calling home to Agility every time. So you might wanna use the Content Sync API when you need to support some type of offline mode and access content without making an API call to Agility. Uh, you want to reduce the amount of uh, REST API calls you're actually making to Agility or you want to synchronize content from the CMS to some other system, such as uh, a Redis cache. You might be running a server-side rendered web app 
and you want to cache your content locally, reducing latency for retrieving your contents, or you may be running a static site generator and you don't want to have to resource all of the content on each build. You may also have a client side uh, application or a single page application and you want to cache that content in your local storage in the browser. So the content sync API is actually part of the content fetch API uh, as an endpoint and it's uh, available for all of our customers. Now there are generally um, a few steps a developer would need to synchronize uh, content from agility to another system. So the first step is to set up a webhook so you can be notified whenever changes are made in the CMS, whether you're publishing a page or saving an item, um, you want to be notified of that uh, action. When that webhook request is received, you're going to make a call to the sync API. And the first call to the sync API is always going to have a sync token of zero. Next, what you want to do is save your results in either the uh, local file system, a database, or a Redis cache. And then you want to continue querying the sync API until there are no results returned or the sync token is back at zero. This means you're up to date to all of the content. The last step is to store the last sync token you had so that the next time you make an API call to the uh, sync API, you'll get content that has changed since your last sync token. Next up, we have the GraphQL API. And I'll actually play a quick video here from our friends at Shopify, um, kind of explaining what GraphQL is. Do you explain to me rest in GraphQL seconds. again? You betcha. Rest and GraphQL are two-way send data over HTTP. Rest is like a vending machine. The channels to obtain your resource have been defined. And if you like more than one snack or resource, you need to make those selections separately. GraphQL, on the other hand, is like ordering at a restaurant. The server brings you a menu describing what they offer. You let the server know exactly what you want, and then the server brings it all out to you. I have a lot, Liz. No problem, Liz. That was a great explanation of what GraphQL was. <laughs> so as I mentioned, Agility supports GraphQL as an alternative way to access your content from your Agility CMS instance. Contrary to the um, content fetch or the REST API, GraphQL allows for full control over what fields you want returned, supports multiple queries in a single request, and also enables advanced filtering and sorting on related content or linked content. Every Agility instance come with, comes with a GraphQL schema based on its defined content models. Um, so you can use GraphQL to consume both published and staging versions of your content. It's important to note that at this time, um, fetching pages, page templates, and page modules are currently not supported in GraphQL, but we do intend on implementing that in the near future. Here's uh, an example of a uh, GraphQL request here. So similar to the content fetch, we have our GraphQL URL where we're passing in the GUID, as I mentioned before, which is the uh, identifier for your instance, um, whether you want to fetch preview content or published content, the language code, and then we're just specifying the GraphQL endpoint there. And if you look at the query, you can see we're actually um, fetching two pieces of content here. We're fetching the header and the footer um, in one single request, which is awesome. And we're also grabbing all of the fields for both those pieces of content. And on the right hand side, you can see the data that is returned from that API call. Last but not least, we have the content management API. Now the content management API is pretty cool because it allows you to programmatically update contents, upload media, manage your URL redirections, webhooks, and more. So it's often used for uh, content imports and integrations where automated operations must be supported outside of the CMS. The content management API is meant to be used when you need to perform actions that can't otherwise be reasonably done within the Agility CMS platform itself. Some things you can do with the content management API um, or some you know, uses for it would be customized content workflows and approvals, um, you have a large batch of content you want to import programmatically. You need to import assets programmatically. 
and oops, sorry here, uh, operations where your content must be manip manipulated outside of agility. So here are some of the content management API methods. So we have methods to approve content, delete content, um, decline content, publish and save content, upload media, save URL redirections, save and delete webhooks. Um, and I believe there are a few more, um, a few more methods in, in that API. And here is a example of the content management API. And in this example, we're using our um, content management JavaScript SDK. So you can see here at the top, we're importing um, the agility management API from at agility slash content management. And we're just initializing the content management uh, API using the get API method. So we're passing in a location, which is the location of your database. In this case, it's US. Um, if you're using the content management API and you're not sure what location you should be using, um, you know, feel free to message support and we'd be more than happy to help you out. We're also passing in our webhook, our website name and our security key. So after that, we are defining our content item as an object here. For new items, you can specify the content ID of negative one and that will upload that item um, or save that as a new item. If you specify a content ID um, that's not negative one, it's going to save that content item. So here we're setting up our content item object with the content ID and passing in the fields we want to um, we want to save. We're also specifying our language code and our reference name. So the reference name of the list we want to add this item to. And then we're calling the api.saveContentItem method. And we're passing in the content item, the language code, and the reference name. And then, um, you know, we get the content ID returns, and we can also handle any errors if there are any errors. 